We have to learn to stand our ground through all the emotional trauma and the turbulences that come into our personal lives along with the situations that are in the world today. No matter where we are on our ladder <laughs> to Christ, on our road in Christ, it, the Lord is with you and he is pleased with you. He loves you with a real love, a love that cannot be undone. And if we abide in Christ and abide in this true love of God, even this word, the Bible, is a love song. It tells you of all the good things God, our Father, in heaven has in mind for us. Yeah, it speaks a lot about the curses and the things that people do wrong, but those are all a part of our learning and our correction, all a part of our growing up into Christ and being filled with the nature of God. We can do this. We can lay down our soul before the Lord. Jesus took his soul to the cross. He was the perfect sacrifice for all humanity. Nobody could have done what he did without taking the credit for himself. Look, look what I did for all of you, you know, and then you turn around and you get mad because the people don't, you know, they don't act like you did anything for them. Well, Jesus is hanging on the cross and he's looking at these people that have taken his clothes. They took his clothes off of his body. Hmm? He did, they didn't ask, could we take your clothes off? <laughs> They literally snatched his clothing away from him. And then they see him, they, he sees them tearing his clothes into four sections. And they see he sees them taking the one garment and they're gambling over it to see who will get it. And he says, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. So who, who of us would have purposely went to the cross for all humanity? bearing the weight and the sin of all, everyone that would ever be born. Who could do it? And look at all these people around him jeering and laughing and the ones that were crying and suffering and the sorrow of seeing their Savior on the cross. Who could look at all of this pain, this hurt, this disgust and say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Who could look at the disciple John and, and say to John, behold your mother, you know, take care of my mom. <laughs> Who could say that he's, everything is happening to him right now. But God sending us a savior has delivered us through this one who took sin onto himself. And did he... The one who knew no sin became sin for us, became the offering, the sacrifice in which we would have life through him, the savior of the world. Now we're in this world and we've forgotten, we have forgotten the depth of this love of God for us, that he should send his son in the likeness of sinful flesh to become a sacrifice for all humanity. That we would come into this place where we sit down in this love of God. This is God's reach for all of us. Don't let the cares of this life choke it out. Get, your, get the word in your face. Luke chapter 21. Jesus starts off talking about the parable in the, in the fig tree, the parable of the fig tree in verse 29. And Jesus said to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves the summer is not is now is right now it's right here at hand truly i say to you this generation will not pass away till all be fulfilled 
Well, some of us don't know anything about fruit trees. We just go to the store and buy the fruit we want. Or we go to the apple orchard or the peach orchard or the orange orchard and we pick fruit, but we've never studied how trees grow. We don't know the seasons or the times. But this is a season where we don't want to be caught sleeping. This is a season where we do not want to be caught sleeping. Verse 31. So like, li likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is right at hand. It's real close to you. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away till, the, till it is fulfilled. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words... Listen to that. My words will not pass away. Luke 21 and 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your, at any time your heart should be overcharged with surf surfeiting. What does surfeiting mean? Let's go to that definition of surfeiting. Excess. Excess. Intoxication, overindulgence. That's what it says. Overindulgence. And take heed to yourself, lest any, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life. And so that they come upon you unawares. Yeah, I, I wish I could just leave my finger right there. And that we would understand that it's not just picking up a bottle of booze and, 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 and drinking it down. It's not just picking up marijuana and having your head swimming all around. It's, it's not just taking some natural drug or some chemically induced drugs and finding yourself in a loopy place. It's the situations and the circumstances of life, the cares of this life. I know that you care for the people in your life and you love them very much, but not to the point of infatuation, not to the point where we, our head is swimming with what can I do? How can I help them? And you're busy trying to help them the way that they want to be helped, but the way that they want to be helped is not bringing them to Christ. It's not bringing them to the recognition of the love that God has for them. They need the salvation of God. But we can't get out of tune with God to, you know, to help them with their situation. We're not supposed to step out of our salvation in order to help them with their situation. Their situation, God could simply take care of if we, if they would come. But if our light is obscured because of them, how can we speak life to them? Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. That word has been put into your heart and on your and written on your mind. The Lord knows how to lead them. Let me look that scripture up. Psalm 25 and 8 it says, Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he shows sinners the way. That's what he said. That's what it says about your children. That's what it says about your husband, your wife. That's what it says about your grandparents and parents. God knows how to instruct sinners in his ways. He knows how to lead them to himself. You're the light of the world. You've come before Jesus. You know him. Yet your heart has been broken and devastated by the people around you. I would say situations and circumstances. Maybe money didn't come. Maybe you got a bad doctor's report. 
Maybe it's that marriage. Maybe it's the children. Maybe it's your parents. But let me tell you something about people. All people were born into sin. They were born into the nature of the enemy. And the Lord knows how to lead them into life. But we can't allow the people that are in our lives to obscure our view of Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. God's bringing you into a into a into the path of life. And he wants to keep you on the path of life. But we can... Well, let's get back to the scripture. Verse Luke, Luke chapter 21, verse 32. And take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged by the surfeiting, surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. Cares of this life. And so that they come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things. So that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And stand, therefore, stand before the Son of God. We need to be able to stand before the Son of God because we believe Him. We trust Him with all of our heart, with all of our mind, and all of our strength. You know, if we would pray, if we would watch and pray, the Lord would bring you revelation so that your mouth will open up and speak God's will for the people's lives around you and for that country over there and for that situation over there. The word of healing will come forth and you'll speak life to the people around you. When my granddaughter got diagnosed with cancer, the word that I heard was speak life over her. Speak life. And we spoke life. We didn't speak unbelief. We didn't pray and, and, and go into ourselves, oh, what's going to happen? I just don't know. No, God says speak life. So that's what we spoke. And they went in there, she got the surgery done, they went in there and they took all of it out. They got rid of all of it. <laughs> Praise God. There may be some things that you might have to go through. But when you hear the word from the Holy Spirit, from God, you hold on to that word and watch the Lord perform it. He watches over his word to perform it. And he will do it. If he spoke life over your marriage, speak life into it. Don't speak death into it. I know the enemy comes in with all kinds of thoughts because they're doing, that, that, that person in your life is doing this and they're doing that and they're doing too much. But don't get sucked into the argument. Don't get high-minded on the situations and circumstances. Look at these loud people today. <laughs> But don't get sucked up into the situation and circumstances. Let the Lord lead the way. You never know what somebody else is going through. But when you see a sad face or a mad face, when you see a complacent face, when you see a, somebody with their head hand on their head, you know, just, just feeling down and they're not really expressing it. They just don't look all right. Pray. The Lord knows how to lead. The Lord knows how to guide. He knows how to direct their steps right to Him. Let them see the glorious light of the Lord as you pass by, as you smile. When you smile, you reach out, you, you send out care. You send out strength. You send out hope. It's all a part of your good works. Let me tell you, it really is all a part of your good work before the Lord. It's all a part of bearing fruit. So don't let the situations of your life distract you from the knowledge of God. 
be filled with the knowledge of his will and with all wisdom and spiritual understanding because the Lord's with you. You're going to be caught up in the air with the with the Lord and forever will be right there with him. You don't have to fear anything. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Verse 34 again. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, with excess, and drunkenness, and the cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares, for as a snare shall it come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all the things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. And in that day, and in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple. And at night he went out and about abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple to hear him. Hear the Lord today. Abide in Christ because he's with you. He's watching over you. He is the word, the yes and the amen of God. Be strengthened and don't be caught unaware. The day of the Lord is its almost it's here. We don't know the day and the hour, but that the day could be at any, any second now. Between now and two years from now, five years from now, we don't know, but it's going to be very, very, very soon. That you will be caught up in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. And that's going to be it for us. And then there's that second wave. <laughs> Be ready. Bye-bye.